EU leaders kicked off a two-day physical meeting in Brussels to discuss the EU's most pressing issues, including the forced landing of a Ryanair flight in Minsk, Belarus, and the EU digital COVID certificate. After a breakthrough provisional agreement reached four days ago, leaders now are looking to formalize the proposed legislation designed to make travel within Europe free and safe. What is the EU digital COVID certificate? China launched its own international digital travel health certificate in March. What does the EU certificate mean for Chinese travelers and vice versa? I'm pleased to be joined from Beijing by Cui Hongjian, Director of the Department for European Studies at the China Institute of International Studies, and via Skype from Brussels by Daniel Gross, Director of the Brussels-based Think Tank Center for European Policy Studies. Gentlemen, welcome to The Point. So first off, uh, we need to talk a little bit about the uh, the uh, plane incident. Now, Belarus was, of course, the most pressing issue during the meeting so far. Uh, the European Council issued a strong condemnation on the forced landing of the Ryanair flight in Minsk, Belarus on Sunday, May 23rd, and the detention of a Belarusian opposition journalist. Uh, Mr. Tsui, why did the incident receive so much attention? What actions can we expect from the EU side? Regarding to this uh, Belarus uh, issue, uh, even there is not this so-called uh, hijack uh, incident happened. I think that uh, for the European Union uh, uh, summit, always they will touch it because, as we know, uh, this time for this uh, summit, uh, how to deal with uh, Russia and some other related issue would be a very uh, top priority for this uh, discussion. So this time, I think that uh, the European Union gave a, a very strong. Uh, you mean this uh, reaction uh, towards this uh, issue? I think it shows that uh, uh, it gives some more. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, uh, confrontation even uh, between European Union and Russia and also Belarus. But but as we know, always the European Union side take account of the uh, Belarus uh, issue uh, in the frame of uh, uh, European Union and the Russia relations. So I think that. Uh, uh, this time, not only because of this uh, incident, and also for the long term, that the European Union and the Belarus relations will go uh, will go down, will keep going down, and also uh, will get a very big trouble for its uh, for its uh, neighboring uh, area, especially when European Union try to stress uh, the importance of uh, uh, stabilities uh, in its uh, neighboring region. Mr. Gross, how do you look at the severity of this incident and uh, its likely impact on regional, uh, you know, geopolitical situation? It is quite clear that this incident further deteriorate the relations between the EU and Belarus and, most importantly, of Russia. I don't think the EU can actually do a lot. Uh, as you have seen, they can just ban the Belarusian airlines from using uh, the European airspace, but not much more. But I think long term this will be important, that it, because it will focus on the ability of the EU to act uh, together. And uh, those forces which usually say, ah, the EU should be peaceful and uh, shouldn't do too much, they will now say, no, this is unacceptable. And therefore, the EU must develop more hard power instruments, must become more assertive. So in the long term, I think it will have a strong impact on how the EU perceives itself and how it acts. But in the short run, the EU cannot do a lot. Let's come back to the EU Digital COVID Certificate, um, where uh, our focus is on for this discussion. Now, the political agreement, as I mentioned in my leading, was reached on uh, May the 20th after contentious debates among EU member states. It said that the, the certificate will be available in digital and paper format. It provides proof that a person has either been vaccinated against COVID-19, received a negative test result, or recovered from COVID-19. Mr. Tsui, the EU has emphasized that the certificate certificate is not a precondition for exercising free movement rights and it's not a travel document, then help us understand what's the difference between traveling with and without the certificate. If we uh, look at this uh, situation now for the uh, European side to deal with the issue of uh, pandemic COVID-19, uh, as we know, one of the very big issues uh, is to try to go back to normal situation, especially 
uh, in the situation that uh, they're still, uh, uh, you know, pandemic, but at the same time, to get some more uh, economic recovery and also the movement of uh, personal and also recovery of a tourism. In all of these uh, considerations, that to, to have this kind of uh, tribal certification is very important for European Union. But at the same time, as we know, uh, now the problem for uh, uh, European Union, especially for member states, is they do have a different uh, issues to tackle with the uh, uh, pandemic. So I think for this time, for this moment, especially the European Union, uh, to uh, have this uh, uh, certification, uh, one of the major paper purpose is mm. to uh, coordinate the measures and to try to, uh, especially to have us in the same state or in the same rhythm for member states to deal with the pandemic. Because as we know, uh, not only for this uh, economical reason and also for political reason, as we know that uh, once there is a certificate uh, for the uh, travelers, for peoples, especially within uh, member states of the uh, European Union, there will be a, I mean, Schengen uh, region, mm. I mean, in symbol. It's uh, important uh, politically for European Union, for okay. European integration. Yeah, Mr. Cross, um, you must have heard, the uh, you must have read the reports. The discussions had been contentious. What are the most uh, contentious, uh, contentious points? And to get this up and running before the deadline, what hurdles must EU members jump uh, through next? Well, first of all, one has to realize that there are also discussions within member states. It's essentially those who have not been vaccinated yet who say, ah, and the others uh, should get an advantage, while I have not been able actually to get even a first shot. So there's a very strong discussion between these two groups of people within each country. And then, of course, across member countries, there are those which depend more on tourism, like Spain and mm -hmm. Greece, for example. And they are very much pushing for something like this because they want to be able to open their business uh, again, their tourism season. So both within member countries and across member countries, there's a discussion about this. But in the end, I think those countries which depend on tourism will win because the others really uh, cannot object uh, to uh, having some certificate like uh, of this kind. Concerning the mutual recognition, possible mutual recognition of similar health certificates, the Commission says it's working with the World Health Organization to ensure that certificates issued in the EU can be recognized elsewhere in the world. Now, China, as I said, launched its own international digital travel health certificate in March. The certificate shows details about the holder's current uh, COVID-19 vaccination status, as well as uh, nuclear uh, nucleate acid test and uh, antibody test results, including the dates and results receiving vaccine and tests and the manufacturer and the type of the vaccine. So uh, this, a sample certificate has already been published by the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So Mr. Gross, do you see in the near future these certificates being mutually recognized um, at all and uh, that you know people traveling from between China and Europe, for instance, will have some kind of uh, synchronization of these certificates? Um, I think the form and the contents of the certificates will probably soon be recognized uh, each other. But, you know, every country has a tendency to say, my vaccine is better than yours. And that's where the real difficulty is, uh, that uh, while the certificates uh, might be recognized, especially in <coughs> terms of the tests, which are universally the same, it might take some more time uh, for the different vaccines to be recognized. And I think there, again, uh, the, the WHO, the World Health Organization, will play a, a key role. And, of course, uh, the scientific community, uh, which will look at all these test results. Uh, and then uh, they will tell the European governments, we think these vaccines are safe or not. And once that has been achieved, then these <coughs> different national certificates can be recognized mutually. 
Um, I have to ask the same question. I, I have to ask the last question to Mr. Tsui because a lot of uh, Europeans are actually quite frustrated here in China that they haven't been able to travel back to Europe easily. Um, do you think there is something that can be done on the Chinese side to, you know, make uh, travel uh, easier for Europeans that that are in China now and and for Europeans that are in Europe now who want to come to China? You were earlier. Uh Earlier uh, than this time, that uh, China and the European Union try to have some more, uh, uh, you know, uh, measures to uh, facilitate uh, the uh, uh, exchange or movement between two sides, like this so-called uh, uh, green corridor and also the uh, special corridor for uh, people and also for trade. Mm. I think that at this moment, uh, undoubtedly, that the China and the European Union could strengthen this cooperation. For example, to have some. Uh, I mean, even a wider, uh, I mean, entrance uh, with, for each other. Especially okay. now, I think the important thing is, uh, firstly, to give some more, uh, a, a kind of maybe easy, uh, easier measures to, especially the student mm. uh, from the okay. Euro European side and uh, who who are try to go back to China. Yeah. And also because now, as we know, uh, even for China and the United States, uh, they are doing the same thing. So why this uh, kind of uh, uh, measures uh, could not okay. take for European side? We have to leave it there. Unfortunately, time is very limited. Many thanks to my guests, uh, Tsui Hongjian and Daniel Gross.